G'day guys, my name is Pete and this is my channel, Pete vs Plants, where we do things planty, but today I've done things a little more native, where I've worked on a native terrarium. So this is a terrarium where the idea is to go somewhere to a single location usually and try and find, try and source all of the things that are going to go in the terrarium, the organisms, um, the bits of wood, the rocks, everything else from that location so that you kind of have a native ecosystem inside of a terrarium. So without any further ado guys, let's get into it and I hope you enjoyed today's video. So I've been watching a few of these YouTube videos recently where they make these nice little terrariums and I'm here at Kmart and they have some amazing jars so I think we're going to give it a go. So look at these. The glass isn't amazing here, it's a bit blurry but I think these ones are a bit better so I might get one of each and they're pretty affordable. So I don't know, the wooden top ones are kind of nice but I kind of also like the glass top here. What do you guys think? Which would you go? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in the car guys and we are about to drive down to Blue Lake in Ocean Grove which is public land and I'm going to grab some, hopefully some plants, some soil and a bunch of bugs to hopefully put into the terrarium that I bought the other day. So I'm hoping this goes well, I guess we'll just go down and have a look and see how it goes. Okay, so another quick detour. I've come down to home timber and hardware here in Ocean Grove because I realized all I brought with me is some containers and unless I want to just be digging around in the soil with my bare hands, which I'm not opposed to, but it may not be a good look and I'm in kind of a white tracksuit today. So I think I'm going to make a mess if I do that. So I might go and buy a, a small trowel, shovel and maybe a towel or something to clean my hands up. We'll see. The... <laughs> I reckon we go the cheap one. That should do. All right, did it. And I also grabbed a soil shovel scoop thing too. <laughs> I see so many people using them and I'm like, man, it would be so useful to have one of those. And I uh, just saw one there, so I had to grab it. Anyway, I've got wet wipes in the car, which I can use to clean my hands if they get dirty. It's gonna be windy, a bit cold, a bit brisk, but um, yeah, looking forward to this. Okay, so thinking about what I need to get, effectively all I need is a bit of the soil from the location, right? If you're making a native terrarium, you want soil from the location. You also want to get plants, you know, a few small plants, some moss, maybe some liverwort if you can find it. So some kind of plant life from the same location too. And I think that's about it. Hopefully there's some bugs, some larger bugs, some invertebrates and stuff that we can see if we lift up a few rocks that we could also introduce into the terrarium, but there should be quite a bit of stuff in the soil. So yeah, that's about all she wrote, I guess. We'll see how we go. The only thing I'm, I'm sort of always worried about this is just people watching you do it and be thinking you're up to something, you know, dodgy. I don't know, are they gonna think I'm like, poaching wild mushrooms or something. <laughs> this guy's trying to get magic mushrooms. He's trying to get messed up, get him. But um, to be honest, it's a cold, gloomy day. So there'll probably be no one there. So I guess we'll see how we go. But again, I should probably reiterate, I think it's really important to do this on land that you know you're allowed to collect uh, wildlife or not wildlife, but you know what I mean? Well, wildlife, yeah, insects, natural native, plants and animals and stuff from if it's a national park or anything like that you can't do it so you have to make sure that it is uh, public land I think or private property that you own or that someone's allowed you to go out onto Alrighty guys, we're back at home. 
my kids and wife are sleeping and I have just remembered though that when they wake up we're going to my parents place for dinner so I'm going to sort of just show you what I've got and I might do the first sort of few steps in making the terrarium and then we'll come back later tonight and I'll actually put everything else in so I've got some wet leaf litter here that I got sort of from beside the lake so hopefully that's got a whole bunch of bugs and other stuff in there and it's also just a bit of good ground cover maybe some springtails will be in there as well they're really good for just consuming loads of the detritus material the dying material inside of a terrarium so i put it in a ziploc bag here so that it all the stuff doesn't escape and it's within that it's in a uh, strawberry punnet <laughs> that i got from woolworths so always trying to recycle the other thing is i have my soil here you can't really see it i'll bring it out and show you but Again, put it in a bag to keep it moist and to prevent any of the bugs and other things in there coming out because I got so much that I couldn't seal the lid on this. So let's give you a look. This I got from the side of the lake, so it's very moist. It'll be full of worms and bugs and there's some plants in there as well that I got that hopefully should be fine later on tonight. They're sort of half buried under chunks of soil. So I will leave that here too. And then lastly, I have some of the other things that I've got, you know, I might not put everything in there, but I've got things like some dried up gum leaves here, some gum tree bark that I grabbed. I think this is willow wood. So there was a dead branch of willow just sitting there and it's really kind of gnarly and bent. And I thought that's really cool. It'd look nice situated inside the terrarium. So I'll probably put that in there too. We've got, look at this bark with fungi on it. It's growing really nicely, a whole bunch of that stuff. I got um, some of this, I think this is liverwort. I think you can see that, and moss in there as well. So I got a whole bunch of these plants. Half of them are probably gonna be weeds, to be honest. Like, I think there's some clover in here. Um, I think I might even have some ivy that I grabbed. But yeah, bark, and then some banksia cones. So again, just some sort of structure in there. And I think this is another, I think this is another Banksia flower. So that'll break down in there. So a whole bunch of other bits and pieces to just play with as options inside the terrarium. Um, so that's what I have so far. Anyway, I am going to go and do a bit of research and just make sure that what I think is in here is um, what I should put in here in terms of how I should situate the soil, the stones at the bottom for drainage and water and bacteria and the charcoal and everything like that. And then we might do that before I leave, but I'll do some research first. All right, guys, so I've done my research. I have jumped over to Serpa Design on YouTube. Tanner from Serpa Design is incredible if you wanna learn about how to make terrariums and aquatic setups, everything like that. So I definitely recommend checking out his channel. And I think now I kind of have the down low for what to do with this guy. So I'm gonna set it up here and I will show you setting up the bottom to this terrarium. Hopefully at the start of the video, I showed you where I got this. I think it was about $12 from Kmart. Um, it's probably not the best in terms of, you know, uh, distortion when looking through the glass. I'm sure you can find better tanks or terrarium glassware where it's, it's very, um, what would you say? The, the light isn't distorted and you get all these sort of wonky, I guess you can see my head through here, right? <laughs> these wonky lines. But for what it was and for how cheap it was, I was pretty happy. Okay, mum's calling, one sec. I don't know how mum always seems to know when I'm filming and decides that's when she wants to call me. I think she must have like a spy cam set up here and she's just watching and then it's just like, and go. Anyway, I organized dinner with mum tonight. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Okay, effectively what you want is some pebbles of some kind, you know, rocks at the bottom to create a false bottom. So this is a water reservoir where the water can go and stay out of the soil so the soil doesn't turn putrid. We then chuck down some mesh here above these pebbles in order to then chuck charcoal on top of that. This purifies the water as it goes through the soil 
through the charcoal and then back into the pebbles. And then we will chuck down a soil layer on top of the charcoal and hopefully you get this sort of artificial water cycle happening where the water goes down the bottom, evaporates, condensates on the sides of the glass, precipitates again, turns into liquid, comes down into the soil and everything goes through filters and that water cycle continues. Okay, so first step here is probably to cut out some of this fly wire, this mesh. Uh, for the bottom here. So I am going to, I think the easiest thing might be to put this over the top here like that and then just cut around obviously. Where are some scissors? I am really hoping my battery lasts guys because I forgot to charge it last night. I hate that. I always charge it when I am um, going to sleep. Ah oh, crap, you're good Pete. Just spill your coffee everywhere. Good job. But I forgot to last night. So I woke up this morning to 10% on my battery. Let me clean up this coffee, because I'm an idiot. Okay, so I am going to open up these rocks. Um, I don't know if you could tear using this. It's gonna make a small incision. That is probably enough. I am then going to give these guys a rinse because there's quite a bit of dust on them. Sorry, it's a, it's a mess and it's dark. Set you guys up here so that you can see all the insane rinsing action. Check it out. And there we go. Oop. Don't lose the rocks. Probably doesn't matter too much if they're a bit wet because we're going to put water into the terrarium anyway. Um, they just may stick onto the side of the glass. Now the other thing that Tanner mentioned is that you want the false bottom to I think be about at least two thirds the depth of the soil above it. Okay, so let's just chuck these in. I hope this is enough. This is probably going to make quite a bit of noise guys, so forgive me. Not too bad. Okay, give that a shake to level it out. Um, I think we might do about, I don't know, maybe another, another inch or so. Shake that out, level it off, and then we will chuck the mesh in. Hopefully have a little bit of overlaps so that the soil doesn't seep down the edges. That should be okay hopefully. Looks pretty good. And now we will chuck in some of the charcoal. Okay, let's try and level this out. I don't think this needs to be an incredibly thick layer. I just think there needs to be somewhat of a layer over the top here to make sure that the water when it goes back through goes through the charcoal. So that's what we're looking at above. And then I think that is about it. So for the false bottom here, so we have our layer of wet pebbles. The water will be able to sit down here in these rocks and then we have our mesh, then we have the charcoal and we will put the soil on top shortly, but I'm probably gonna do that later tonight when everyone gets home. Evening has fallen on the Smithson household. We are here. Time to keep going with this terrarium. Okay, so the next step is going to be getting the soil layer down on top of the coal here. Coal? <laughs> Charcoal? So I think in order to do that, I'm going to grab my uh, little potting tray tarp thing here. It's pretty heavy. Chuck it down, because I have a feeling this is going to make a mess. Some utensils here as well, just to break things up a little bit. So I grabbed this from pretty close to the water's edge. So it is sort of almost like mud. I'm not sure how that's gonna affect things. Hopefully that means it'll have a lot of moisture and bugs and other things in there. Um, so I've got this sort of spoon implement that I'm gonna use to kind of just break things up so that the soil is a bit more what would you say, sort of like continuous in um, texture and everything, not just one big lump. 
All right, and we got some of these smaller plants as well that I was hoping I could put into the terrarium. And I have no idea what species these are. So I will try and work it out later maybe, but I have a feeling that um, <laughs> it's, they're probably mostly weeds. I also got some sort of vegetation from on top of the water. I'm not really sure what this is either and, or if it's gonna survive. I just thought I would grab it and give it a whirl. Um, some of it was sitting on top of the mud doing well, even though the, um, the water had obviously evaporated. So it was surviving okay, so I thought I would grab it. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna just chop up this soil a bit. It's kind of a bit clay, I think, a bit sandy clay. Uh, there we go. But I think by doing that, it's gonna make it easier to also spread throughout the terrarium and for things to move through it. I guess I can probably just get everything out here, break it up. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Got some more plants in here. There's another one here. Hopefully some of these, even if they are weeds, I think some of them are gonna be these small kind of like daisy or dandelion flowering plants because there were some of those nearby. So I'm not too phased if I end up with some of those in the terrarium here. They kind of look cute and nice anyway, so whatever. I'm just gonna dump this out. Ooh, we got a worm. Sweet. So at least one of those in here. All right, save you for later. Um, some leaf litter. So I think what I'm gonna do is just get a layer of just this soil and start kind of putting it in, I guess, over the top of the uh, charcoal. So I'm, I need to as well, I need to remember to try and slope it so away from where you're gonna view it. So you want it kind of coming downhill effectively, right? Sloping down towards where you're viewing it from and then you can put uh, rocks and everything else on top of that. So it adds a bit of depth. All right, so I'm going to take out some of this leaf matter and break up these chunks again, a little bit more. There's roots in here too. All this detritus material is hopefully just gonna break down anyway, which it should. And I guess we will just start putting this inside. So I'm gonna layer it over the top of this charcoal. And <laughs> I have really dirty hands, but I kind of want to give you guys a better view. I'll just put in an initial layer. I should have worn gloves, but whatever. YOLO, and obviously be wary guys if you're doing this and you know, you're worried about bugs or other things, maybe make sure you've had your tetanus shot. <laughs> but I don't mind too much. All right. So I'm going to try and bring you guys a little closer without getting too filthy and without hopefully dirtying up the terrarium. So you guys are a little too close now, I think. See if I can angle this down gently. Okay, can you see okay there? Looks like you can kind of see. Okay. So I'm gonna imagine the front is here and the back is over here and kind of build it up like that. So another layer at the back. This is just mud, by the way, effectively. Another worm, I guess we'll just chuck you guys straight in. Where's the one that disappeared over here? Put you in. Um, save this plant. Ooh, there's some more creatures. Oh, just lost it. Lost it. <laughs> there you go. You can go in. I think we're almost done. I might just build up the back here a little bit more. Have a look in there. I think that's probably good, guys. So I'm gonna have a wash of my hands quickly. Okay, so this is what we look like. Here's the back and we'll come around to the front and sorry about the reflection of the light. Um, there's the front there. So it's sloping down like that from back to front. 
Cool. So the next step, I guess, is to think about leaf litter, bark. I have some of... So I guess the next step is the wet leaf litter that I have. So I will think about putting that down and also the pieces of willow that I have um, and bark. So this stick, for example, um, obviously the whole thing can't fit in there. So I got a bunch of these bits of willow to think about how I want to position those in. Um, and, and if they're going to fit, I don't think they are. So might have make a bit of noise. Hopefully no one heard, but that should fit in there. If we go from front to back, maybe I might actually have to, um, saw a bit off. Okay. Ow, just stab myself. All right. I might do this over the top here. Don't try this at home kids. I want to keep the, the mess contained. All right, just the saw bit here on my Leatherman. Did a good job. All right, so I'll chuck this guy in here, kind of going from the front to the back, or maybe slightly off center. Okay, so we now have this bit here. I like that it has these sort of pieces jutting off it. One thing I should have probably tried to get was rocks, but I didn't really think too much about it at the time. And there weren't really that many around, to be honest. Okay, so I'm trying to think of how the layout might work a little nicer. That's probably a bit better. Coming down to the front like that. It's nice, okay. I also have some sort of rotting sticks here that I can probably break up a bit and see if they fit in there okay. Or maybe we don't have to go overkill. Maybe we just do, yeah, I think we just try and keep it limited. There's a bit of bark here for texture. So what I'm gonna do actually, I think because these are sort of the big pieces, I might put down some of this leaf litter first. Over the top here, the top layer of the soil. And then put the large chunks of bark down as if they've just fallen out of the tree because they're usually right on the surface of the forest floor, right? And the um, leaf litter, especially the stuff that's really rotting, is usually right at the bottom in contact with the soil. So hopefully that works well. The only thing I'm just thinking about now that I'm kind of wondering how it's going to work is with this really muddy soil, how is it going to go with allowing water to travel through from bottom to top, right? I assume it'd be fine, but I'm not sure if I should have used something a little more porous or what. All right, I'll chuck that guy around the side there. I might just chuck all of it in. We'll sneak a bit under here. It's looking kind of good. Hopefully it's not too busy. Right, that's about everything in terms of my dry leaf litter. Maybe a little bit more here at the back. And a nice gum leaf for good measure. One of these guys. Chuck you in there somewhere around the side. So here's the look so far. We have those large pieces of willow in there with the leaf litter on top, the soil, the charcoal, the mesh, and then the rocks down the bottom here. I'm gonna think about what I've got. So I've got some of these larger bark pieces and they've kind of got fungus on there, which is really cool. It's really cool. Check out the stuff on there. I'm not sure if it's focusing. Hopefully it is. Maybe not, but okay. So I'm gonna think about putting him down face first. Guess with the fungus down, maybe slotted in like so. Maybe just below, lifting things up a bit. No. Ooh, wow, there's some sort of like jelly stuff on this. Ooh, and a spider. Okay, cool. In you go, matey. So we got our first little inhabitant. <laughs> well, apart from the worms. 
Um, but yeah, there's this jelly stuff on there. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, camera's horrible at focusing. Um, I might just chuck that in. That could be snail eggs, it could be anything. What I might do is break this piece up. Yeah, there's heaps of it. And slide it down there. Break these bits of bark up a little bit just to add them in on the forest floor here. And um, yeah, there we go, okay. So now I'm gonna grab out my tweezers and I think I'm gonna try and put some of these plants in. I think this might be overboard though, to be honest, guys. I have a feeling that I've probably tried to pack too much in, which you know is kind of unavoidable the first time, but let's see what we've got here plant-wise. So I've got some stuff like this, which looks like liverwort. So I'm trying to think about, that was sitting on some rocks down at the lake there and it'll have all kinds of creepy crawlers in it, creepy crawlies in it hopefully. So this probably needs to be kind of like close to the soil to get a bit of moisture. So I might put that down the side here and um, we'll see how it goes, I guess. Give you guys a better view here, hopefully, so that you can see what's going on. So I've snuck him down here on the side some leaf litter on top. We have some moss in here somewhere too. So a little bit more of this liverwort that I'll put down there somewhere. Try and get it to sink its roots into the soil. So here is some of the moss. This was the moss that I found down there. So I'm hoping that this does pretty well too. Just have to think about how and where I'm gonna put this. Uh, might have to break it up. Ooh, this has got heaps of heaps of stuff in it too. I'm not sure if you can see these worms. Probably is one of those cases, guys, of just <laughs> biting off way more than I can chew in terms of the animals and everything that I have in here. Uh, let's see. The issue with this moss that made it a real pain in the ass was the um, amount of roots in it. Wow, look at him go. You see that? Ew. Running around like this. So I had to really chop into it. We got some plants here. Okay, so where can I chuck this guy? Maybe what I do with this guy, take this bit out, take this out, and the liverwort here. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably getting that completely wrong. It's probably something completely different. All right, I'll chuck that down there. And then I might Move stuff around a bit, move some of this leaf litter aside and try and sneak the moss in here. I just saw that spider again. So, there we go. This just should work well. Maybe move this stick a little bit, put the moss underneath. Sweet. Okay, can we fit this in elsewhere? Should have probably put the moss in first. I'll move some of this around, some of this leaf litter, and sneak this bit of moss around the side here. That's good. Okay, nice, and then put some of this leaf litter back down. It's a bit too much, I think, in there. Sneak that around there. Oh, the plant came out. Where are we putting you? Okay, tweezers. I guess we will, maybe we plant you right up the front here. See how you go. I think that's sort of good. All right, we got a bit of leaf litter here. We'll put it underneath the stick. The log over this side so that the moss gets a bit of light. Um, we've got some other plants that we can chuck in. So again, I'm not sure what these guys are, but we'll find out, I guess, if they flower. So I'm gonna grab him and put him down in here. Let's see if I give you guys a better view. Get another one. These are <laughs> almost certainly just weeds, but whatever, right? Let's just give it a burl, see what happens. Hope for the best. Okay, what else have we got here? Another one here. Maybe we'll sneak you down the side here. See how you go. This one at the back. And there was a bunch of this stuff that was really close to the water's edge that actually looked really nice. So I might chuck this in there as well, maybe up and around the back. So I think it kind of looks really nice, but the easiest thing might be to just pull this apart and then try and kind of thread it in. Or maybe just try and get the whole thing in, Pete. Actually, there's a nice little spot here at the front, right down here. So maybe I try and 
get it in there with the tweezers underneath that log. So, maybe the easiest thing is to kind of try and move this around. I've just suffocated the other plant that I put in there. In fact, yeah, there we go. Yeah, poor little other dude's gonna get suffocated in there. So pull you out and try and plant you down somewhere else, maybe here. Jesus, I'm doing a bit of a mess job here, guys. But it's all about learning. God damn. I'm thinking there's probably enough, guys. I'm, it's probably gonna get chockers otherwise. Put a bit more of this in at the back here. Um, besides that, what else have I got that may be interesting? I was really wanting to do something with one of these guys. So perhaps I try and fit him in over the top as well somehow. There we go. How can I situate this guy interestingly? There we go. All right. I think that's probably enough. Maybe a few other sticks. <sighs> okay, I think we're about done guys. It looks like it sort of turned out okay. I guess we'll just see how it goes over the next few days and weeks. I am going to either go out now into the darkness in my backyard and try and find some slaters and maybe a centipede or so to put in here as well, some larger uh, crustaceans and, and other invertebrates and stuff. Um, but besides that, I think it's probably fine. There's quite a bit of water in the bottom here, so I'm not sure if I need to add any. I might give a few squirts to the top, but that is about it. So yeah, obviously you can do this on the cheap. It cost me 12 bucks for the uh, glassware. I think, you know, everything else in here was probably a few dollars, the rocks, the charcoal and the mesh. And then the other stuff is what I brought back from my little adventure down to a local lake. I've actually kept the moss and whatever this is, the thing that I'm calling liverwort, and I am going to keep it in a container here. And I'm hoping that I can keep it alive and perhaps use it for something else later on. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see what happens. So it's kind of like a prop box, I guess. I'll leave it in there. I almost forgot too, I found this really interesting plant. I have no idea what it is, but it had these kind of nice green and red leaves and was, I don't know, it was kind of weird. It was on the ground. The stick here is like bone dry, but the plant on top looks like it's doing okay. So I'm wondering if I can actually just put this into my terrarium here and just see if it roots. I'm not sure, but I have these two little plantlets. So I might actually do that. I'll chuck one at the back here and kind of wedge it down and see what happens with that one. Maybe I'll do this one in the same spot next to it and we'll just see how it goes. So I've put them at the back here. I have no idea what to expect. I guess we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up and I'll give you a final look at it and then we might call it a night. So I also got this kind of water vegetation. I'm not sure what you would call it, like duckweed kind of stuff. And I kind of don't want to throw it away. So I think what I'm gonna do is give it a clean in my sink here and kind of let it float up and do its thing and then chuck it into a jar of water and see if I can keep it alive. So I might just set this down here for a sec. I'll let you guys have a look at that. Yeah, so you can see this cleaning it off, hopefully separating it from the mud that was below it. But I'm not sure how I'm gonna get it out of here. <laughs> okay, so this might be interesting. I might just have to kind of scoop it out with my hands because some of these little guys are so tiny that I don't think I'd be able to use a sieve. Okay, so here's my glass jar with some filtered water in it that I thought I would use for this uh, duckweed stuff. I thought it would just kind of look cool because the stuff obviously floats and just looks beautiful. Um, maybe all I really Maybe all I really need to do, I'm just separating out some of the chunks that are floating around here with it. Um, bark and other things. Part of a snail shell. And then I think I will just scoop it out with my hands and drop it in, I guess. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know if this is the sort of most sensible way of doing it. It's, all right, let's just do it, Pete. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, it does come out pretty easily. <laughs> the hard part is when you've only got a little bit left, kind of corralling it all into a single space. Right. Eee! It's stuck on my hands! <laughs> Alrighty, here goes. <laughs> this feels like herding cats. There should be some kind of expression here. Herding duckweed. I'm trying to get it out of the water here, but I'm just managing to kind of push it around everywhere. All right, that's probably enough. I can probably flush the rest of it. There's heaps here and it's going to reproduce rapidly, I think. From what I understand about these weeds. This would be kind of cool though, I think. Ah, don't put your hands in, Pete. <laughs> when I put my hands in, I end up actually pulling up more than I'm putting down. Oh my God. Get off, get off, get off. All right, I'm going to go for one last one. Come on, can I corral all of it into a single area? Oh man, there must be a tool or something that people use besides their hands for this. It's about as good as it's going to get, I think. This is what we're looking at. I'll have to clean it up further and try and take out some of these um, bits of bark and dirt and everything. But that was the basic idea. It's hard for me. <laughs> because water kind of moves, it's hard for me to kind of tip this forward and show you what it looks like. I guess I'll give you an aerial shot. Here it is. Hopefully it cleans up a little bit as things settle. I guess we'll see how it goes. But I thought it would be interesting to try. Okay, now it is time to give the glass a bit of a clean and what I do need is a microfiber cloth but I don't have one of those unfortunately so I'm gonna have to make do with a tea towel <laughs> and try and clean the mud off the sides of the glass here it might help if I wet this first so nothing too fancy to it just trying to get into all the nooks and crannies where I can see that I have put dirt on the glass. I should probably clean the outside too because I use my grubby paws on the outside as well. Some more around this side. It's going to be really cool to see how this goes I think over the next few days guys because I think hopefully more of the life kind of comes out and starts moving around and we get some action, we get some things happening, get to see some nature. You know what? I really can't help myself. I think I'm going to go outside in the backyard and try and find some ice pods. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to film this, guys, because I have to use my phone as a torch. So I'll just have to show you what happens after the fact. Okay, so here's the hall, guys. Um, I'm going to take this inside quickly because I feel like he's going to climb out. Okay, in you go, mate. Go on, off you go. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, so here's a little bit of a better look at what we got outside. We've got some leopard slugs, I think, some large earthworms. I don't know if that's gonna be overkill having this number of them in there. They're a bit big. A flatworm, uh, millipedes, some of these brown, I think they're larvae of some kind. I don't know if they're beetles or something. Um, and the cockroach, which I've put in here and shut the lid. Half because I think it would just be funny to have a large cockroach in there when my wife wakes up and has a look at this. Um, but two, I think they're kind of really cool critters. So I don't know if he's gonna to be too big for this though. I have a feeling he's gonna be way too large and I'll probably have to just let him go. But we'll see how he goes. At least he's there and he's, yeah, pretty conspicuous. <laughs> Damn. These uh, millipedes let off this kind of like caustic smell. It's kind of awful. Oof, Jesus when they've been disrupted. You can really smell it if you're close up. I remember, I've got a story for you guys, you should probably laugh slash cry. When I was a kid, my dad was having a shower and I remember coming in, I think, I don't know if I was, you know, what, what was going on, but I was effectively in there. I remember being in the bathroom with my dad and there was a millipede that I picked up and I was like, dad, can you eat these? And he was like, I don't know, probably. And I put it in my mouth and it was the most horrid thing I have ever, ever tasted. And I've tasted a lot of horrid things and that was by far and away the most awful, awful thing that has ever been in my mouth. It was just disgusting, which I can imagine is why they use that mechanism to, you know, get rid of predators. Anyway, all right, flatworm time. Now these guys are really, really cool little guys. And I'm not sure, I may have accidentally broken this guy in half. In fact, I think I did. But I'll put his bottom half in because I know 
think these guys can actually um, break apart and then turn into two individuals. <laughs> so I'm going to put this guy in there too. I'm not sure if these guys are carnivorous or if they feed off the detritus material in there. We have this leopard slug. Again, I'm not sure if he's just really big and if this is just going to be too much for this terrarium. It may be, but we can just give it a go and see what happens, right? Um, so he might actually be way too big, I think, guys. He's going to dirty up the glass and everything. Uh, you know what? Just do it. YOLO. Um, I might put, I'll put another worm in there and I'll put the millipede in there. And you know what? I think we just go for broke, guys. I think we just chuck everything in. Chuck the other worm in here as well. Get some very good churnage. And then we have these little beetle larvae things as well. I'm not sure what they are. Um, hopefully they're not venomous or poisonous or gonna spit something out, but they're these little brown things that I just saw moving around when I lifted up um, something that I had outside that was on the grass. So hopefully they pupate and turn into something. I guess we'll see. Anyway, I'll chuck a bunch of these guys in and they should definitely be eating all the dead leaf matter and everything. So, or at least be food for something else. Maybe the cockroach, maybe he'll get into it. All right, that's probably enough. We'll just shut it now. I really have no idea what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> As you can probably tell. <laughs> I'll get, let these guys go. I am going to thoroughly disinfect my hands. Alrighty guys, so there you have it, my homemade terrarium. I hope you guys like it. I can already see some critters running around in here, including some small spiders, obviously the cockroach. Um, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'll probably give, give you guys an update in the future because I have a feeling that it's not going to turn out well, or at least it's not going to turn out as I expect. So, yeah, I don't know. It was a good first attempt. So anyway, if you guys have any comments to leave, any suggestions, like probably put less animals in here, then feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Um, but besides that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Peace. I'll take what's left I'm used to coming up Second best Always feel the best of times I'll be damned If I'm leaving without you mm -hmm. So I've just spent the last five minutes watching this guy over here, I'm yet to name him, uh, cleaning himself. And it's funny, it kind of almost humanizes them a little bit. He's just sitting here, cleaning his antennae, cleaning his legs. You know, it's kind of like, oh, it's been a long day. I'm a bit dirty, time to work on hygiene. You never know, might be some ladies hiding in this uh, terrarium that I find myself in now. <laughs> but it was kind of cool to watch and share that moment with him. Or her. Could be a her, I guess. Mm -hmm.